Hello once again, we are behind the mic, Gary Laubach and Mike Joseph. And again, we invite you to be back at certainly a Fisher Stadium as we finally are gonna get back into the booth to do a home game as coming into town will be Colgate. Colgate comes into the ball game three and five overall. They're one and two in the Patriot League. And there's a lot of good news after this weekend. Mike, everybody in the Patriot League except Holy Cross has lost two ball games. Mm -hmm. Holy Cross with one loss, but having it been to Lafayette, Lafayette basically holds a two-game lead now in Patriot League standings with three games to go. Yeah, that's a, a nice cushion to have, and mm -hmm. it's so exciting to be back home again. I mean, you and I have been together with John for, for a month, so just to get back in the booth, get the back here on College Hill, it's supposed to be a nice day. Um, I'm excited just to do another game, and uh, this team is so exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. I just love the way they play now. They played a little down last week, and I think that's a, 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 because of the Holy Cross game being so physical a game spending so much energy in that game. I think they had a, they lost a little bit of their edge, but the mark of a good team is to win games right. when you're not at your best, and they did that Saturday. And they now are ranked as high as they have ever been since joining the Patriot League. They're ranked number 16, uh, their highest ranking. That's the coaches poll, and the stats perform poll has them at number 20. So uh, certainly a lot of good things right now for the Lafayette Leopards. Let's take a look back a little bit at the Georgetown game. Georgetown was what they have always been. They're really a thorn in our side. I think they played a good football game. They caused us some problems. I think you're right. I don't think we had the edge that we right. certainly had against Holy Cross. But with all that said, we still had a good ball game. We certainly got a great effort out of Billy Schaefer and Sekou Way. Yeah, and uh, offensively, we start games very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, we went up 14 nothing. We got the good, uh, got the lead, got the little bit of a cushion. Then we started to play some defense. Um, I was a little concerned, obviously, with the ball going over our heads. But when you stop the running game and you hold them to basically zero yards mm -hmm. rushing, mm -hmm. you're going to open up some things because you're adding more guys to the box. So that's going to be a key this week. And Georgetown's always presented us a problem. They always have athletes. They're very similar, if you look at it, to us. They have a lot of athletes on the outside, um, and then they have a, a pretty good quarterback. That kid was impressive mm -hmm. as a backup to come in and throw for that many yards, but that was, I think, based upon how many guys Lafayette had in the box. So, um, and, and defensively, we did just enough. Sekou White stepped up big, some big plays, and again, Billy Schaefer, what can you say about him? He's the best. And once again, I thought Dean Noble really handled the ball game very well. He got some of his long passes in again. Uh, that leads, uh, obviously, to scores. Uh, I guess the real... Uh, Shame in the ball game is that Jamar uh, may very well be out for this ball game. He got injured. Yeah. yeah, he got injured on a play where we missed a block on the edge. Corner made a great play coming in. It was a little bit of a kick pass to the outside. And, um, you know, hopefully he can recover pretty quickly. It looks like some sort of a hip issue. But, uh, you know, he's a tough kid. He's on the precipice of 1,000 yards. Mm -hmm. I cannot yeah, see if Jamar right. can play, he's going to play. But look at it from a standpoint of opportunity. You know, some people say, and my, my favorite coach, Robert Sala, for the Jets, always says the difference for opportunity is between one and two is just opportunity. So the difference between a guy that starts and a guy that's a backup is opportunity. So here's Conyers. Here's your opportunity. Mm -hmm. Here's Troy Bruce's opportunity. Maybe we get Najee Adams back. So these guys that have been kind of watching everything happen in front of them have an opportunity to go out and show that they belong and they can prove it, and the running game is going to be huge this week as well. And they're coming off great efforts. Sekou White is the defensive player of the week in the Patriot League, and Troy Bruce is the rookie of the week in the Patriot League. And Troy Bruce at times shows signs of being uh, much like Jamar Curtis yeah. in his speed and his quickness. Yeah, he's explosive is what he is, and that was a play where he got through the first part of the line. He's so strong in the lower mm -hmm. body, broke a tackle, and then to see the speed to get down the sideline, and that's what he's boasted. I mean, he's a freshman, you know, Nobody's really a freshman anymore after really nine games in the end of the, the uh, season, but Troy Bruce shows that he can do it, and he got most of the snaps. It wasn't Conyers. It was Troy Bruce mm -hmm. that got most of the snaps. That offensive line did a good job. They're a little banged up as well. Hopefully they can get some health back, but uh, you know, look at those five guys across the front. They played every single game, and how important is that? You take it for granted when you have it, but they've been good. Yeah, they, we have not talked about injuries all year long. It's the first time now that maybe the injury bug has hit it just a little bit. You talk about young players stepping up. Yeah. Devin Page, what a catch, touchdown yeah. uh, he made in that ball game, and I don't think we've called his name all year. Oh, man, he's been terrific. He had that one play earlier in the mm -hmm. game where he broke through in that little reverse, and then to go up and catch that ball, and he's not a big kid at its highest point, to bring that down, to get his foot down inbounds was amazing. It was a huge play to create, again, a little bit of separation for Lafayette, and it adds another weapon for Dean DeNoble. I mean, you look at the first two plays of the game. They stuffed the run. The third play, Dean goes up over the top, and it's Stewart. You know, Stewart has not 
Last year he was a guy. Mm -hmm. Now he's the, the guy. guy. You know, Curtis was a guy. Now Curtis is the guy. So, you know, Stewart opens things up for guys like Paige and for Carasilla who got nicked up but did come back in the game. Um, and I also saw Griffin Rooney back in the game. And then you get the tight ends back involved. You know, this team has a lot of weapons, and Paige is one of them. All right, we got to look at that ball game in our rearview mirror because Colgate is coming in, and I'm not sure which Colgate team is going to show up. <laughs> they just got beat by Bucknell, 49 to 34. They beat Georgetown by 10, 28 to 18. Um, not sure here. I think Michael Brescia will play this week. He yeah. played last week in that loss, however, but uh, he did not play the week before. So Michael Brescia, I believe, is healed at quarterback. We've seen him quite often. Yeah, we've seen him before. We've seen him beat us right on this field two years ago. He's a, a very dynamic player, but they've used three quarterbacks. They've used Osborne, and then they went last mm -hmm. week to uh, Sterney. I mean, they got three guys that can play and they feel confident with. I think Brescia will get the start. It's going to be about stopping him, stopping that running game again. How many guys do we have to add to the box? Don't give up the big splash plays, but stop the run. It's always been the key to stopping Colgate. And Brescia is one of those quarterbacks that can run and run very well. He doesn't have great numbers this year, primarily because he's been sacked so often. So 92 yards rushing for Brescia is not the real story. He's got well over a couple hundred yards when you take away the sacks. Running back Jaden Henry we know about. We've seen him before. We do not know much about Chris Gee and right now uh, he is the leading rusher on this ball club. Yeah, both those guys uh, right now combined for about 600 yards rushing mm -hmm. so it's a two-headed monster. Gee got a lot of work last week and if you look at it, they put up some points last week so you got to be careful. Bucknell just exploded. Ralph Rucker was fantastic in the game throwing the ball. Um, but Colgate answered many, many times. So they can run the ball. They can score the football. They've gotten a little bit better in the passing game. What concerns me about Brescia's eight interceptions mm -hmm. and only mm -hmm. two, inter uh, two touchdowns. That is not good. 53% percentage. So can we get to him? Can we keep him in the box? Again, it's going to be another running quarterback. He's out of the box. So what does uh, um, Michael St. Germain do to kind of slow that down a little bit? So I'm interested to see how this is going to play out. But this is a game Lafayette should win if they play the way they're supposed to play. Russia has a lot of targets. Four guys have caught a lot of passes. Saunders, Moore, Hutchison, Hurlman. Uh, Saunders, the leading uh, pass receiver with 45 catches, almost uh, 550 yards and a couple of touchdowns. On defense, two good linebackers, Sweeney and Flick. Defensive back Owen Goss has really done a good job this year, 39 tackles. He's got a couple of interceptions. They've got a good special teams kicker in Jake Jaworski. We don't want this to come down to a field goal. No, certainly do not want it to come down to that. And then if you add Jaworski, you add Owen Goss in there, mm -hmm. who blocked three kicks, player of the week last week. Um, we can't have any problems on special teams. We've been doing a good job fielding kicks, getting the ball out, getting good field position. We started the ball, I think, three times at the 50-yard line last week on the onside kick that Georgetown tried. And then two plays later, two possessions later, we're at the 50 again. Got to make sure we capitalize on all that. But their special teams can, you know, has not jumped up and bit us. It hasn't been great. Uh, we missed a field goal last week, I think, could have extended the game as well. So, um, you know, this is a, a game where you can't have any problems on that. The kicking game's got to be solid. And you know what? Let's block our own punt. Let's run one back for a touchdown. Let's do those type of things. So um, Lafayette has that capability. Another dimension to add to this team. Love the sound of that. What are you doing inside the huddle this week? Uh, we're going to talk about basically stopping the run versus, Hol uh, versus excuse me, Holy Cross, uh, Colgate. Zone read. They don't run it they don't dabble in it they actually go after it this is their their type of thing they read different guys you know where are they going to get billy schaefer like are they going to try to put him in conflict that kid is amazing the way he plays so we're going to talk about you know adding to, how many guys does lafayette have to add to the box stop the big splash plays that's what lafayette has to do and they'll take this team out we, of course, invite all of you to join us on Saturday afternoon at 1230. Mike and I will be in the booth. We will be behind the mic. Thanks for joining us.